It is Wednesday noon, friends. It is already. And this it's is a Bible noon. reflection time, Bible study time, uh, coming from Berea United Methodist Church. And we are located in Berea, Kentucky. Now, some of you may ask, where in the world is Berea? Of course, it's in the it's Bible. It's not on the map. Yeah, <laughs> it is only the map, but it used you to be the wrong map. <laughs> somewhere here in, uh, yeah, okay. in Greece. But um, we are in central Kentucky, should I say, uh, about half an hour further south from Lexington, right at I-75. I-75 is crossing to our uh, community, so we are, we are centrally located, and that's where the program comes from this, this noon time. My name is Pastor Timo Carbone. My uh, colleague, uh, Assistant Pastor Mary Miller, is with me as well and with you all. And it's good to know that there are several people with us. Uh, Seems like uh, we start with few, but then later uh, there's more and more once we get on YouTube. So uh, we are glad to have you again with us. We have been working on the Book of Acts, and we just realized that we may be working on this past Christmas. It may, and we may not be able to get it done before Christmas. Who knows? But we are not competing. Or this is not a uh, sprint, but this is a marathon. We are trying to follow the narrative mm -hmm. and go from there. Let's go ahead and have a prayer. Uh, some of you may have a special concerns today. Mm -hmm. and, and it's been heavy on you. We want to remember you. If you send a prayer concern to us, by emailing or texting, by calling. If you are not familiar with the church, you go on website, you find uh, Berea United Methodist Church website. There is an uh, email uh, addresses and phone numbers and church office numbers where you can call and leave your prayer concern. And there's also church's address information that if you feel more comfortable writing it down and then mailing it, it will come to us and we, we promise to you we will pray for you and for the matters that are important to you. So let's pray together before we start working on our today's assignment. Dear Heavenly Father, we are here to learn from you. Lord, we feel that we, we are so, so, so much uh, pupils and uh, learners uh, and students more than anything else despite of uh, for how long we may have spent time with you, Lord, uh, and, and life with you, Lord. Uh, we are learners today more than anything else. So teach us, come Holy Spirit, come upon this Bible study and help us to learn from you and hear from you. And we pray for everyone who is with us today. We ask blessing upon them, upon their families, upon their uh, matters and things. And Lord Jesus, and during these challenging times, we are asking, Lord Jesus, please protect us, protect us and help us to stay safe. And we pray for all those who have been infected by this uh, virus, Lord uh, Jesus, we ask in healing and strength. Uh, for each and every one of them. In your name, Lord, we pray and we thank. Amen. 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 Okay, if you have uh, Bibles handy, please open it up from the book of Acts, and this is chapter 19. Mm -hmm. I think we touched it a little bit, we visited it a little bit last time, but let's go ahead and start it afresh uh, from the beginning of this chapter. Mm -hmm. And again, we are dealing with an interesting uh, part of of this book. Uh, every chapter is. And please notice as you start reading and following this reading that uh, if you say that there's no action going on in this book, then you probably missed missed everything. Because uh, it seemed like uh, whether it was Peter or Paul or whoever involved, they've been, they moved from one action to another. Of being in the middle of one action and then next moment they are in the middle of another on a next action so there's lots of action talking about many challenges in the ministry talking about dealing with many and all kinds of right. challenges <clears throat> in the ministry one sometimes right after the other just yes. to keep coming, yeah. 
sometimes we believe today that oh my goodness uh, we 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 were we were dealing with many challenges but seemed like a seemed like a nothing like uh, what they were dealing with mm -hmm. but let's start following this narrative at least <coughs> and we open it up again and from the chapter 19 and let's go ahead and finish five first verses if you five don't mind verses. okay yes all right <clears throat> while apollos was in corinth paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached ephesus on the coast where he found several believers did you receive the holy spirit when you believed he asked them no, they replied. We haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then what baptism did you experience, he asked. And they replied, the baptism of John. Paul said John's baptism called for repentance from sin. But John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later, meaning Jesus. As soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah, I'm sorry, okay. the seven. Yeah. Then, then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. All right, thanks for good reading. First of all, uh, <clears throat> obviously you all know where, where Ephesus uh, was located. Actually, Ephesus uh, was the capital, very prominent city, in Asia Minor, of course, it's a present-day uh, Turkey, right. if you point it out right there, yes. And a very, very prominent city at that time, comparable to Alexandria in Egypt, and then a, uh, uh, let me say, uh, uh, what would be the other, maybe uh, Antioch in Syria, mm -hmm. Syrian Antioch, which is Here. more prominent of the two. Antioch, the other one, the is, other is, one here. is here, in yeah, in Pisidia. Okay, uh, these three cities at that time were uh, the most <laughs> prominent uh, three of different cities. Just, just very, very, very prominent. Of course, uh, located right at Medi uh, Mediterranean. Mary, pronounce it. Mediterranean. <laughs> we did this before. Mediterranean. I can't, Mediterranean. I can't say it correctly after you say it incorrectly. See, it happens to me. After yes. I try to pronounce after her, I get all mixed. <laughs> anyway, right here. Mediterranean. Friends. There, yes, there Mediterranean. All right. Right there. Uh, by the way, there is 21 countries that's in the Mediterranean uh, located in this area nowadays. So uh, that's a busy place to have your city. Now, uh, some of these towns even today have very uh, brief and short coastline uh, with, uh, with the ocean. But uh, that's where Ephesus, uh, Ephesus was, and, and they're very prominent, prominent uh, city. All right, so uh, that is what Ephesus is all about. Big piece of note here on the floor. So what is happening here in the first seven verses, friends, uh, it's pretty interesting, really, mm -hmm. because um, Apostle Paul was dealing uh, some new converts and wanted to make sure if their if they're building, if their foundation mm -hmm. with the Lord was, was good and solid and correct. And then, of course, what you do, how you figure it out, like Apostle Paul, he would start asking questions, for example, that... Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? <clears throat> so uh, that was pretty, pretty uh, straightforward question. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what made him asking question like that. Was he kind of wondering whether whether they have or they haven't, or was it just a question that this man of God, after ministering new areas and regions wanted to know and because these people obviously claim to be a followers of God mm -hmm. so he wanted to make sure that if everything is okay sound like a wonderful people but I just want to know did you receive Holy Spirit when you received when you believed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then of course the answer was that no no we we we, we didn't actually they didn't have no clue what mm -hmm. this man of God was talking about they haven't never heard about the Holy Spirit that kind of wonders, uh, wonders you, but 
that if you claim to be a believer, but then on the other hand, you haven't heard about the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but you, you'd be surprised that even today in many Christian churches and denominations, uh, people, if not, are avoiding to talk about the Holy Spirit, but they are there their experience, or let me say that their knowledge about the Holy Spirit is very, very minimal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in some denominations, uh, they don't really want to much talk about uh, the third person of Godhead mm -hmm. at all. So um, in the book of Acts, friends, when you start reading it and you keep on reading it, it seems to me that believers receive the Holy Spirit in a variety of ways. Usually they receive the Holy Spirit um, uh, their, after they have processed, uh, professed their faith in Jesus Christ. That was a time of filling. They were filled with the, with the Holy Spirit. Now in this situation, since their uh, foundation wasn't solid and they didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit, so Holy Spirit hasn't come on them at all. So uh, after Paul enhanced their uh, doctrinal foundation and, and about their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they had been baptized only by the, by the baptism of, of John. John the Baptist, mm -hmm. which is baptizing people in repentance, right. saying that making them uh, available to hear more, making them to, available to hear more. Uh, after repenting, after feeling sorry for their sins, knowing that there is not everything right in our lives, uh, we we need God. We are we are we want God. We want to follow Him, but that was pretty much where they were at. Mm -hmm. They had repented, but they didn't have saving relations with the Lord. They didn't know much about Jesus, hardly at all. So when Paul brought them a little bit deeper in their faith. Mm -hmm. And then, after laying his hands on these, uh, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was a um, that was a that was a beautiful um, beautiful way to um, to um, to get into that saving, uh, not just a knowledge but experience mm -hmm. right. about mm -hmm. the faith in Jesus Christ. That's right. Yeah. The, I guess when you when you raised the question or, or made the comment that. <clears throat> Even today, um, in some churches and some some experiences, there's not much discussion about the Holy Spirit. Um, I guess it makes me think about how important the creeds of the church are. Yes. So that um, a believer, if you if you have spoken or recited the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, um, you would at least have experience enough to to know that the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think uh, I think that's also something that's kind of um, maybe uh, overlooked in in a lot of churches these days mm -hmm. too, that we, we maybe don't say those creeds enough mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that that whole, the whole, uh, kind of the whole package is expressed. Um, but uh, yeah, so I was just pulling up the, the Apostles' Creed on my phone here and um, it doesn't say a whole lot about the Holy Spirit, but it does mm -hmm. talk about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But um, So I believe in Jesus Christ, his, son, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. And then, of course, it goes on um, about the Father. And then a little bit closer to the end, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. So there's not a lot of information but it gives all the information, all the basic pieces. You know yeah, what that took a yeah. while before uh, oh, that was in written yes, form. Yeah. Many meetings. Many, many. If we uh, Methodists <laughs> have uh, love meetings, but these guys had uh, many meetings before, before this, before this was product was ready down, yes. to be repeated. But then once it was, it's not changed a whole lot. Since no, it hasn't. It hasn't. So now, <clears throat> that's a good point you brought up. Um, and many times when we do it, Apostles Creed in the in the church. I, if possible, and if I remember it, I try to remind people: please think about what you say. Sure. Yeah. Please think about these words. Uh, this is 
my faith, your faith, our faith in in critically and importantly in in a in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Here's what we believe, and and here is where you can build on your Christian Christian faith. Now these folks uh, that Paul was dealing there did not have this knowledge. No. And they didn't have cell phones to check it out, <laughs> no, uh, and so forth, even books to read. But anyway, uh, they were brought into a solid, solid foundation of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And it is not just a knowing about him, about them, but it was experience, uh, God's presence in their heart. And sometimes, yeah, since you mentioned about the doctrine here, Sometimes we argue over uh, certain doctrinal issues. And, and I am not saying, I am not watering down the church doctrine. I, I am not. But I am, but I am saying that the doctrine is not the most important thing in the life of the church. But the life itself and the works and actions of the church are the most important thing. And the Holy Spirit uh, will always glorify the right actions, Christian actions, uh, done in faith uh, in the Lord. So um, I, I can say, and may, this may be a little confession, that when I was uh, a younger minister, uh, I got involved pretty easily uh, in the doctrinal, uh, if not arguments but uh, deep conversations and sometimes uh, I didn't hesitate to to correct somebody I don't want to say that I don't correct anybody anymore but I guess uh, what I'm trying to say that um, uh, any church including us we can have a great doctrine as we believe it mm -hmm. everything is just uh, solid and good like a square uh, on the on the lawn, but if there's no life, if there's no flesh around it, mm -hmm. what good is that? There's no use for yeah. it. Very good point. So, uh, what church needs today, church needs church needs actions and life, and Christ-like actions yes. and Christ-like life. Yeah. Not just my actions and your actions or yeah. somebody's actions. We need Christ-like life and actions in the church. And that's where Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us and, and bring his presence as truly as we uh, follow him. Okay, that was a, that was a good point. So uh, I guess instead of going into a great uh, conversation on, on the year, okay, what is a true sign of somebody being, being born again? Is it, is it tongues, speaking with tongues, or is it love, or is it... Is it something else? And um, uh, it can be all this. Mm -hmm. I am referring to what I said that in the book of Acts, all the way in the Bible, it seemed like a believers receive the Holy Spirit in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. The main thing is that Holy Spirit is in your heart and giving you life and, and power to be a true follower of Jesus Christ. That's right. Now, if you speak with tongues... Let me say this. Let me be at least that charismatic. I have that gift. I'm not bragging on, but I'm just identifying that I have that gift. Uh, do I use it enough? Maybe not. But uh, I have that gift. But I'm not saying if somebody say that I don't even know anything about or I don't have that gift, I am not looking you down and saying, okay, you are not even close where I am or deeper I am. That's, that's not the way to say it. By the way, I'm, I'm thinking about one of my friends back in Finland, back in Helsinki, where I'm from. So uh, he was <clears throat> uh, heading towards full-time uh, pastoral ministry in his denomination mm -hmm. at that time. And, and one of the criteria in that denomination is for a, somebody to be a candidate for ordination was that he had, he had, he had a proof that he has spoken with tongues. Oh. Otherwise, he wouldn't be uh, ordained mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And that was bothering him and his friends too because he obviously want, wanted to be bothered, uh, wanted to be a, uh, ordained uh, for the ministry. 
and the, uh, he took time for it. To just have that experience, mm -hmm. to, to, to be uh, certain that I have been uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and I speak with tongues, which is a sign to me and to others so that I'm good to be ordained. Mm -hmm. And he never got that experience. Right. I don't know whether today, but I, I remember he was struggling. So he gave up and he was never ordained. Wow. He gave up. He's been uh, involved in the ministry, doing a wonderful job as a, uh, as a uh, uh, radio reporter and working on radio programs and TV programs and many other wonderful things and great singer and all that. Uh, now, was that God's way for him? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But on this side of uh, experience, feel that uh, if anybody would be eligible to be ordained, uh, very great speaker, uh, wonderful singer, uh, good, good, just a good, good, godly man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I truly feel that uh, church lost a good candidate. Right. That denomination lost a good candidate for ordination. And that the, the I mean, if I, I don't even know what denomination you're speaking of, but that um, that seems like it was a man-made qualification for, I believe, for a God-given mm -hmm. God calling. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that makes it so if we, we are married very often in that situation in the churches when we are creating and recreating these doctrines uh, on, on our own that we want to get that own label own label on that mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. but we need to make sure that uh, he's been approved and a stamp was given and the label was put on him or her just to make sure. I think the only label is that uh, that person, of course, is solid in the Word, has good, solid background, uh, and he is willing to serve the Lord wherever the Lord wants him to serve, and love Jesus Christ, and love people. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the main criteria to be ordained in any, any course studies are the other, other important thing. There's, there's no enough studies for anybody to be, uh, to be pastor, but we we go from there. We, we study as much as we can, and when we, we learn as we go. But I think that sometimes we get too focused on the gifts of the Spirit and don't think enough about the fruit of the Spirit. Yes, So that's true, too. A person's life, whether they are following Jesus or not, you will know that by the fruit that they bear yes. um, in their lives, maybe even more so than the gifts, uh, the charismatic gifts of the Spirit that mm -hmm. are listed in Scripture. Yeah, I would cho choose rather choose the works of the Spirit in me and in my church than a solid and and clean doctrine that mm -hmm. uh, we are promoting. Mm -hmm. I'm not going against doctrine. Don't get me wrong, but uh, but uh, I'm just trying to see if I have to choose between these two. And many times I'm afraid, especially <clears throat> when I listen to uh, going back to my experiences where people are just working, working hard to to save their doctrine. And keep up with people. What a what a shallow way is that? Mm -hmm. You save your doctrine and you feel good about it, but what what you gave up with people, and you never should do that. Mm -hmm. You never should do that. Mm -hmm. Jesus wouldn't. I know for sure. Yeah. Jesus wouldn't keep up with anybody, even with you, my friend, who I was in this program. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep on reading, and this is now, I guess, the verse eight okay. here. How far? That's a good question. Okay. Uh, I think 22? Yes. All right. I think so. Then Paul went to the synagogue and preached boldly for the next three months, <clears throat> arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some became stubborn, rejecting his message and publicly speaking against the way. So Paul left the synagogue and took the believers with him. Then he held daily discussions at the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for the next two years, so that people throughout the province of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. When handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched his skin were placed on sick people, they were healed of their diseases, and evil spirits were expelled. A group of Jews was traveling from town to town, casting out evil spirits. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation, saying, 
I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. But one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. The story of what happened spread quickly all through Ephesus to Jews and Greeks alike. A solemn fear descended on the city, and the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. Many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. A number of them who had been practicing, practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at a public bonfire. The value of the books was several million dollars. So the message about the Lord spread widely and had a powerful effect. All right, thank you so, so much. Uh, quite an quite a interesting events that are happening there. Yes, yes. Yes, it is. And Paul is in Ephesus. I remember that in very, very prominent city. By the way, um, that was Paul. Mm -hmm. Somebody may say today that Paul was very urban guy. He, oh. he was a city guy. Mm -hmm. Remember, our Lord Jesus Christ, all his examples were from countryside. Uh, but Paul was a city guy. He wanted to go to these big cities at that time. As if you were going... Uh, first time the ministry and you go first to uh, New York or Chicago or uh, uh, Los Angeles and many other great places. Um, that would be probably Paul uh, doing today if he would start his ministry here. We sure need missionaries and ministers in New York and, and Los yeah, Angeles absolutely. and mm -hmm. many places here in the United States. Great, great, big cities, big, big cities, much bigger than Berea, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So what's happening here, Mary? What we see, what we hear. Where did Paul um, uh, got himself involved? Well, one of the things it talks about is how um, God used uh, Paul even, even when handkerchiefs or aprons merely, that merely touched his skin were taken and placed on sick people. They were healed of their diseases and evil spirits were expelled. Yeah. That, that's, an, that's just mind-blowing mm -hmm. when I think about that. That um, he, uh, he had gifted and, power, and, and empowered Paul's ministry so much with those things. Um, so that's one thing it talks about. But then the next part of the story is that um, these uh, Jews that were traveling and they were casting out spirits and using the name of Jesus. And um, so uh, verse 14, um, the seven sons of Sceva, Sceva is a leading priest, were using uh, this in their, in their incantations, it says in my translation, um, using the name of Jesus, but the uh, evil spirit replied, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? Yeah. Um, meaning, I believe that, uh, that these uh, people who were using this, the sons of Sceva, were, not, were not, part of the, not part of the church yet. They were not believers in Jesus. So the, um, the power of the Holy Spirit wasn't within them, and they were not able to um, speak against these evil spirits. Yeah, that's a that's a, Mary. That's a bad spot to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't want to play with those evil spirits uh, at all, at all. It's uh, better that you go a different direction instead of trying to uh, uh, confront with them if you don't have uh, if you don't have tools to do it. Mm -hmm. If you have power to do it. Now the the key verse here key verse here is uh, the verse eleven. It says, God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. Talking about unusual miracles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God gave Paul power to perform unusual miracles. Mm -hmm. and, and they sure were miracles. Uh, mm -hmm. I have seen miracles happen. I have seen God using uh, his servants uh, as an instrument for great miracles. And... 
and it's just a, sometimes you may, you may say that unbelievable what you see and you're trying to kind of make a sense of what you see and, and, and I think this audience, should I say, uh, right there in Ephesus, we're about to have that feeling, probably a feeling that, mm-hmm. is this really happening? Am I, am I seeing what I see? Mm-hmm. And of course, there's always uh, these uh, preacher's sons that, that we're probably, uh, probably getting involved in trouble and, and uh, they are trying to use that power that they saw well, they were probably experienced with using these uh, magic yeah. skills, trying to um, trying to maybe make money and and so forth. And they they start playing with these evil spirits that Paul was dealing. Going back to what Bible says, God gave Paul, Paul uh, the power to perform unusual miracles. So Paul knew that I can't go against these evil spirits on my own with my own strength. So if God, if the Holy Spirit doesn't give me that power and wisdom to deal with these evil spirits, uh, I need to walk different direction mm-hmm. because I'm going to, uh, I'm going to lose, which is true. Now, this son of a priest Siva uh, didn't hesitate to try that, right? And it didn't work out too well. So um, this is a reminder how real that evil world and dark world friends is. Uh, there's nothing to play about. Uh, if you, uh, if you uh, believe you need to do something, you pray uh, and in Jesus' name, and you cover yourself, uh, as the old saying goes, under the blood of Jesus Christ. Make sure that your life and your soul, your spirit is protected. And there's only one, one protection against evil and darkness. It is the name of Jesus and the work he did for us on the cross through his blood. That is to protect you. That is the only way to protect you. But if you are going against them with your own, own power, you're going to lose it. Sometimes prayer battles that we are dealing with, uh, even within our families, that we are dealing with darkness, Mary. Mm-hmm. And sometimes ministers and their families are, as they are in the front line, I would say, um, uh, are being attacked by these evil spirits one way or another. Many times they try to come against you, at you, through your children, for example, Mm -hmm. or some other. So you need to make sure that you know how to um, fight against these evil spirits. Uh, That can hurt you bad and and can kill you. So um, only strength is, only way that uh, Apostle Paul was successful because God has given him power mm-hmm. to do uh, these unusual miracles, unusual miracles, powerful miracles. So, and with very good results. Yeah. Yeah. So these, these, uh, these magic makers gave them gave themselves up, and they say, "No, now we really know what the highest power is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now we have learned to know something." And they start repenting and turning in their tools and instruments of that dark world and magic world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I would say that what would Mary happen if Paul would go? <clears throat> with this minister in his mind to certain cities in the United States today, uh, what kind of uh, action he would create uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. by his ministry or somebody else. Uh, or any, any city in this world, I'm not just trying to make the United States, our home country, sound like a bad place to right. leave. But but any, any place in, in, in this world, especially in mission field, where the, mm-hmm. where the name of Jesus Christ has never been proclaimed, yeah. where there's only darkness. Uh, and, and yeah, that's a, that's a good question. But then there is, there is a, uh, one of the results was that uh, a number of them who had been practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at a public bonfire. So they 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 really um, they really uh, meant uh, 
true faith and they really wanted to repent from their past mm -hmm. actions. Mm -hmm. And the value of the books was several million dollars. Right. And there's a, I have a footnote in mine that says that it was, um, in Greek, 50,000 pieces of silver. Yes. Um, let's see. Which is the 50,000 pragma. Okay. Uh, which is a silver coin. It's a silver coin. Uh, so 50,000 pragmas was the value. 50,000 pragmas. Was, was the value of a, of a day's wage. Yes. Okay. Of Sorry. a day's wage. So whatever is your weight, my friend, uh, mm -hmm. some, somebody makes more and somebody else. But uh, first of all, when you start, for example, this translation, uh, what I guess you are using, I'm hearing, is the, your uh, the New Living one. Translation. We're using the same okay. at this point. And then there is, I have. You have a couple others. I have a couple yeah. others here. Yeah. Now, in some other translation, it says uh, 50,000 pragmas, which is uh, one pragma is one silver coin. So that was the value. And then this translation is several million dollars. So first of all, you say there's a conflict there. I guess what this translation is trying to make it clear to us that this is how big amount it was. Right, right. Now to us here in the United States, uh, we've been using uh, dollars for quite some time. So saying that this was 50,000 pragmas. So it may say, well, it probably is not very good currency translating it to a uh, US dollars or mm -hmm. euros or something like that. It's a big money, friends. Yeah. It's a big yeah. money. That's the main point. Let me say if you, uh, if your uh, one day uh, wage is, is uh, probably $100 or even $50 or $200 or whatever it is, count it 50,000 times. So I promise to you, you end up getting some few million yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. That was a huge amount of a, uh, Huge amount of money that was burned. Yes, uh, but that shows how 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 um, convinced they were. Yeah, and how they took it seriously. Yes. Mm -hmm. How they wanted to change. Mm -hmm. And that is what repentance always is, friends. It, whether it's a worth of millions of dollars or it's a worth of dollar, mm -hmm. but it, the seriousness about it. Yeah, it comes from your true heart. You know what? Whether it's a it's a it's something stolen. Pencil, hopefully I didn't stop it <laughs> from my sector, <laughs> uh, or something. Uh, but it has come a burden. Uh, uh, it has come a uh, stumbling point between you and the Lord. Mm -hmm. You better keep keep up with it and in repentance and and your uh, keep it up and say, Lord, if this is hindering, if this is blocking me from you, uh, I throw it away. And it was a seemed like a quite a sacrifice from these guys right. yeah. to throw this valuable asset away, but they believe it's, it's more valuable to be a true follower of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. to make it right in the life. And repentance, friends, um, going back to that part, is always the first step to make it right in your life, to make things right in your life. Mm -hmm. So that's the beginning. That's not the end. That's the beginning to make it right. And I'm afraid, Mary, today that repentance is not a very common deal in Christians. Um, and it should be everyday deal, yeah. every single day. And uh, to, to repent and to be forgiven. And then your life is, life is uh, uh, steady and strong after that. Mm -hmm. You are building on Christ. Okay, um, well, let's move on with this. Right. There is... I think from verse 21 on. Okay. The whole thing? Yeah, let's go ahead and try to see okay. to the end and see what, what is there. All right. Verse 21. Afterward, Paul felt compelled by the Spirit to go over to Macedonia and Achaia before going to Jerusalem. And after that, he said, I must go on to Rome. He sent his two assistants, Timothy and Erastus, ahead to Macedonia, while he stayed a while longer in the province of Asia. About that time, serious trouble developed in Ephesus concerning the way. It began with Demetrius, a silversmith who had a large business manufacturing silver shrines of the, goddess, of the Greek goddess Artemis. 
he kept many craftsmen busy. He called them together, along with others employed in similar trades, and addressed them as follows. Gentlemen, you know that our wealth comes from this business. But as you have seen and heard, this man Paul has persuaded many people that handmade gods aren't really gods at all. And he's done this not only here in Ephesus, but throughout the entire province. Of course, I'm not just talking about the loss of public respect for our business. I'm also concerned that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will lose its influence, and that Artemis, this magnificent goddess, worshipped throughout the province of Asia and all around the world, will be robbed of her great prestige. At this, their anger boiled, and they began shouting, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Soon the whole city was filled with confusion. Everyone rushed to the amphitheater, dragging along Gaius and Aristarchus, who were Paul's traveling companions from Macedonia. Paul wanted to go in, too, but the believers wouldn't let him. Some of the officials of the province, friends of Paul, also sent a message to him, begging him not to risk his life by entering the amphitheater. Inside, the people were all shouting, some one thing and some another. Everything was in confusion. In fact, most of them didn't even know why they were there. The Jews in the crowd pushed Alexander forward and told him to explain the situation. He motioned for silence and tried to speak. But when the crowd realized he was a Jew, they started shouting again and kept it up for about two hours. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. At last, the mayor was able to quiet them down enough to speak. Citizens of Ephesus, he said. Everyone knows that Ephesus is the official guardian of the temple of the great Artemis, whose image fell down to us from heaven. Since this is an undeniable fact, you should stay calm and not do anything rash. You have brought these men here, but they have stolen nothing from the temple and have not spoken against our goddess. If Demetrius and the craftsmen have a case against them, the courts are in session and the officials can hear the case at once. Let them make formal charges. And if there are complaints about other matters, they can be settled in a legal assembly. I am afraid we are in danger of being charged with rioting by the Roman government, since there is no cause for all this commotion. And if, Roman demands an ex if Rome demands an explanation, we won't know what to say. Then he dismissed them and they dispersed. All right, thank you so much. Uh, talking about the last paragraph, friends, I know that the city had a very smart and wise uh, mayor. mayor. Yeah, that was for sure. They sure had. Uh, we get back with him after a little while. Okay, afterward, Paul felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to go over to Macedonia. And this didn't happen first time when when he felt that here is where I need to be, here is where I need to go, and and I need to be following the Holy Spirit, because that will be my next assignment right there. And sometimes this message, uh, friends, came uh, straight to Paul, with a deep awareness that here is what I need to do. And sometimes God using uh, other people, other people through inquiries and requests or uh, and so forth. So I believe this is the way the Holy Spirit talks to us even today, sometimes using uh, people. Now in Paul's situation, uh, him getting revelations, uh, I say revelations instead of just one revelation was more pretty common thing as well. Now, not too many of us can keep on pragging on and on. this is my revelation I God gave to me, more or less like a, I hope it will and would be, but more or less like uh, God speaks to us through, uh, to, for example, this Bible study or through other people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or uh, after being praying. So it comes to us, the decision comes to us through different avenues. Mm -hmm. yeah. am, I, am I making yes. sense? Yeah. Yeah. Rather than we are witnessing a big, big, uh, 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 big, uh, big screen uh, revelation mm -hmm. coming from God. That can happen. I don't count it out at all. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing. Uh, the riot in Ephesus 
And it was about religion. Yes. It's about other gods. It was about religion and it was about money. Yeah, well, it was money yes. too. Yeah. 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 Sometimes we can't Some things we, don't we, change. We, so, so, yeah. Sometimes we don't want to put these two together. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it is only religion that you are following going to church, I, I think, friend, um, I feel very sorry for you. Uh, and re let me rephrase it. Um, uh, if it is based on good tradition, uh, that's good. If the tradition is Christ and following Christ. Now, if it's only the church's tradition that somebody taught you or I've been taught to just do that, mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't take you too far. Now, religion, <clears throat> of course, can be all kinds of religions. And, and, and it is not always the best choice for us to follow just religion. Our religion is a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. That's why they call us Christian believers. I would add always the believers. I think... You can be also uh, uh, Christian by religion, but we see it all the time. The people don't practice it. They don't live live it mm -hmm. every day. That's not their everyday life. It's just a it's just a it's just a statement somewhere in the in the books that they are Christians by by faith, but it doesn't mean really to them. I'm from Europe, and I know that. Uh, Christianity is a big religion there, but <clears throat> growing number of Europeans don't have no clue uh, why they are Christians, mm -hmm. even knowing where they're supposed to go when they when they need uh, to hear something. So unfortunately, and that, that's that thing. So Christianity, yeah, it's one of the religions, but it's a faith relationship in Jesus Christ. Right, right. That's what it is. It's life. It's life, and it's much more bigger than just the formality, uh, fulfilling formalities of being Christian by your religion. Now, can you bring us in, what was this uh, episode all about, that there's somebody who was making great gods yeah. by hands? Yeah. So, and now, so yeah, the, the uh, Demetrius, who seemed to be a spokesperson at this point, um, he had a large business mm -hmm. manufacturing this the silver shrines of the goddess Artemis. Yes. And so he called his... It's like they had a, a, a meeting with all the workers, and he said, you know, Paul is convincing people that this Artemis, these, these, uh, these things that we create in honor of what we think is our god, Artemis, that, um, that these aren't real. Mm. So Paul is messing up our, our livelihood, basically, yeah. is what's happening. Yeah. Um, and uh, this, you know, this isn't going to go well for us. We're going to start losing money. We're going to start not being able to... Uh, um, but then he also couches it a little bit, at least the way I see it. He couches it a little bit by saying, um, you know, our great, the great goddess Artemis, um, um, basically trying to protect the honor of, of the goddess. But I think really what he's mostly focused on is, is his business um, and his, his income. So, I mean, it, it's... It's real. It's not, you know, it's not that it's um, not an important thing, but that's, that was the whole point of view as mm -hmm. well. Paul is convincing people that they're, and so people aren't going to buy these from us anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so then, of course, that made uh, a lot of people angry, and that's when they started um, what seemed to be a riot. And uh, I think one of the most telling statements um, is... Uh, verse 32, inside, once they, they entered the amphitheater um, and they had dragged some of Paul's companions into the amphitheater, but it says in verse 32, inside of the amphitheater, the people were all shouting, some one thing and some another. Everything was in confusion, and here's the telling statement. Mm -hmm. In fact, most of them didn't even know why they were there. Mm -hmm. And there you have another example of, of, of this kind of a crowd mentality crowd uh creating a riot and some people are just caught up in it and don't even really understand the reasons um, which is many times the nature of riots yeah, i mean right. um, that or restlessness or demonstrate whatever you say some people go there and they are leaders they know why they are there for and then 
sometimes maybe the great majority is there because somebody somebody brought them in, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and things can get pretty scary. Pretty, yeah, and uh, out of hand very quickly. Out yeah. get out of hands pretty quickly, uh, and we see and we witness all the time. Yeah. And then another part of the story that I think is really important is that um, people close to Paul, including uh, uh, officials of the province, um, begged him not to go into the amphitheater because mm. they feared for his life if he would, yes. um, which I think was probably pretty, pretty accurate and pretty perceptive. Yes. So. So there, there was a uh, somewhat kind of chaos uh, mm-hmm. taking place. And behind the chaos was that the religion they were practicing was in danger. And more or less the business behind the religion was in danger. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got it right. Uh, They got it right, uh, namely by his teachings, uh, by his miracles. Apostle Paul was proving that, uh, guys, uh, why do worship handmade God? Because there's a real one. Mm -hmm. There's somebody who has power and who cares for you, and 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 yeah, he's somebody you can create. You can made out of your hands or by your hands. He's much greater. Actually, he created you all, mm-hmm. and his name is true living God. But um, so there is lots of confusion and 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 so forth. Now, um, and of course, seem like I hate to put it this way. I have lots of uh, Jewish friends, but it seems like uh, here um, uh, the, the, the Jewish minority or creative population, it depends on how you see it, uh, was, was, uh, was uh, somewhat behind this, this, uh, this action that was taking place uh, and, and, and so forth. Now, we mentioned something, I mentioned something about this, this mayor that stepped forward, uh, wanted to cool people off and, and bring calmness into that situation. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and his uh, words were right on target. I'm, uh, Bible doesn't tell much more about this man, but I think every city, every community, Every gathering needs uh, people like him mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who step forward and saying, and I don't know how much he truly believed that this, this uh, godness that uh, people were trying to save, they were saving their religion was really worth of saving. But he, he was using his words very wisely. Right. Right. To get people calmed down and, and uh, referring to people, citizens of Ephesus. Everyone knows that Ephesus is the official guardian of the temple of the great Artemis. Now, how much he believed in that, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but he said he believed that this is the only way, uh, referring to these very emotions and, mm-hmm. and, and, and feelings to people to calm them down, that... This is not what this is all about. You keep your gods, in, but you are not one. You don't want to create more chaos that you have already created because it will put us in the situation that Romans, the ones who are ruling over, will see that this is probably a uh, some kind of uh, revolution coming mm-hmm. from our mm-hmm. our side. And then that is going to bring us a lot of trouble. So we don't want to get there, guys. Let's just calm down. Let's just cool Mm -hmm. off. And you realize that nobody, even this Paul, didn't didn't steal anything from you, even from your temple and from anybody of us. So things are good. And and, uh, let's just go from here and Mm -hmm. cool off. And he was able to calm them down. Yes. He sure was. Yeah. But the seed has been sown, good seed of, of, of Jesus Christ, had been sown by Apostle Paul. And that's the main thing here. Miracle, miracles were per- performed, and the message of Jesus Christ was working and uh, growing and working progress in the hearts of those who were being witnessing, who had received the message. So that's the main thing. Mm-hmm. That's the main thing. Yeah. Anything else, anything smart to 
wise to say. Um, nothing in nothing in the moment. Mm -mm. Yeah. As the old saying else. goes, and I think it's true also with this one, there's more to it. Mm -hmm. There's more to it. <clears throat> this is the basic narration that we are following. Uh, what an incredible uh, continuity of different experiences. Mm -hmm. Again, with Apostle Paul. Um, unbelievable things. And uh, dealing, dealing, excuse me, dealing with scary stuff. Uh, strange things um, when you go right in the middle of darkness you never know what to expect mm -hmm. friends it is the same thing today you don't have to defend god god defends you only thing you need to do is to proclaim jesus christ and and live as disciples of christ today mm -hmm. so that brings the power on you by the holy spirit and your sword is the word of God. And it don't matter what translation, if the official translation of the Bible, that's your sword. That's, that's your power. That's your powerhouse right there. My power, your power will fall short when you are dealing with any circumstances today. There's no power. But there's power in this world. And there's power for you and for me as there was power for Apostle Paul. So what a beautiful area it, it was, this uh, uh, Mediterranean area, beautiful way. Mm -hmm. You want to pronounce it one more time? No, you did No, fine. you're good. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, friends, I think we're done uh, for today. Uh, we are so happy that you were with us. Uh, keep on reading. Keep on following this wonderful book of, book of Acts, Acts of Apostles, and Acts of the Holy Spirit, actually. And it will bring blessing to you. God will teach you a lot. He will lead you deeper in your faith journey. Don't put everything away. Just, just like that. Don't put it away. Humble your heart. Receive the word. Pray about it. And follow it. And it will make you stronger. Can you, Mary, pray for us today? Yes, I will. Be happy to. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We thank you for all that you teach us by reading your word. We thank you that we have uh, each other to encourage each other as we need it to, to follow you and to read and to um, call upon your name. So Jesus, we ask that you would be with us, be with each one who's listening to this study and continue to teach us to be more and more like you as we follow you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you guys. Good to have you. Good to good to be with you today. Mm -hmm. See you next time.